प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कनिष्ठा महाराज निजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज निजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान निजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, and all of you, Loyadam Parivar Bhakto, Jai Swami Narayan. Today's lecture will consist of Iwa Course Part 2, and it is based off of a Vachnamrut, a Swamni Vat, and a Charitra of Galuji. So we would like to get right into it. Starting with the Vachnam Loya third. Sriji Maharaj has spoken 262 Vachnam and out of them, we are very, very fortunate that 18 Vachnam were spoken in the village of Loya, Surakachar Darbargar. Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke 18 Vachnam and from them, Loya third chapter is one of the most important ones because it explains regarding faith in God, nonetheless following the commands of God, and finally at the end, the climax, realizing Bhagwan how he is and what we should be saved from. These are the three various points, main points that this Vachramrut covers that we would like to go through. So without further ado, let's begin with the introduction. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. Vachnamrut Loya Third. The title of this Vachnamrut is One with Faith in God Coupled with the Knowledge of His Greatness. On the night of Kartik Vad, 13th, Samad 1877, American date is December 3rd, 1820. So that date is coming up and it would mark exactly the 200th anniversary of this Vachnamrut. Moving on, Sriji Maharaj was sit sitting on a large decorated cot in Sudakachar's Darbar in Loya. He was wearing a white dugli made of chint and a white cotton padded surval. He had also tied a white feto around his head and had covered himself with a white blanket. At that time in the assembly of Munis, as well as satsangis from various places had gathered before him. You can tell from the Vachnamrut, the uh, introduction uh, paragraph, that this time uh, it's very, very cold, especially in India. If you look even in December 3rd, uh, December is also uh, the winter season here in the United States. But especially in India, uh, in Loya at that time, Bhagwan was wearing very, very warm clothing and various bhaktos were also there listening to Maharaj's Katha. Moving on. Thereupon, Bhagwanandan Swami and Shivanand Swami asked Sriji Maharaj, What are the characteristics of a person who has faith in God and his santh coupled with the knowledge of their greatness. The question is, what are the characteristics of a person who has faith in God and his santh coupled with the knowledge of their greatness? Faith in God and his santh. Religion is all about faith. The base primary foundation of any religion in this world is based off of faith. If one has faith, then one has everything. If one does not have faith, but, but follows each and every rule of that religion, there is no point. Faith is the fundamental pinnacle point in every religion. And Bhagwan is asking, what are the characteristics of one who has faith in God and his son? 
भगवान वेवर ही टॉक्स अबाउट गॉड ही ऑल्सो मैंशंस हिज संत बिकॉज भगवान स्वामीनारायण खेम डाउन हियर फ्रॉम अक्षरधाम विथ फाइव हंड्रेड नन संतो हु आर हिज पर्सनल एजेंट्स वी कैन से एजेंट्स हु मेड अदर सेंट्स एजेंट्स हु परफॉर्म द सत्संग थ्रू आउट द लैंड एजेंट्स हु रोड प्राइसलेस स्क्रिप्टर्स एजेंट्स हु बिल्ट टेम्पल्स एजेंट्स हु creatively performed festivals and organized festivals so on and so forth bhagwan swami narayan brought down with him the most elite santos with the most elite skills and displayed them here to promote his upasana and to help souls understand who he really was that's why here it says what are the characters of god who has faith in god and is sant coupled with the knowledge of their greatness faith in god that's one part knowledge of their greatness is another part example faith now suppose you see a mango tree ever since a small age you've been explained that a mango tree looks like this it has these kinds of leaves it has these kinds of fruits which are called mangoes this is this is what it looks like when it's raw this is when it looks like when it's ripened you know the total essentials of a mango tree now suppose someone comes and tells you that this is not a mango tree but this is an apple tree will you believe that person no because in your mind from the beginning it has been instilled that this is a mango tree and you believe it and you know it that this is a mango tree that's why you have instilled your faith even if anyone even if the world's best botanist comes and tells you that this is an apple tree you would not be able to understand or comprehend or believe that botanist that this is an apple tree you would in your heart believe that this is a mango tree because you've seen it you've grown up with it you have developed knowledge of it in the same way you believe that this is a mango tree that is called faith coupled with the knowledge of their greatness is what well the greatness of the mango tree it has fruits that are called mangoes which are very very sweet you can get mango pulp from it make mango ice cream you can make many many delicacies from the mango the greatness is that this mango tree has a long life expectancy the mango tree is one of the best in the world it, these kinds of mangoes that grow on it are very rare to find this is the greatness of it so there's two parts to this question one is faith one is greatness and bhagwan is asking for the characteristics of god and his son regarding these two factors let's get into it shri jamaraj replied what would a person who has faith in god and his son coupled with the knowledge of their greatness not do for the sake of god and his son for them he would renounce his family renounce any fear of public ridicule renounce a kingdom renounce pleasures renounce wealth <clears throat> renounce his wife and in the case of a woman she would renounce her husband all these things can be done for a person who has faith and greatness of god and his son well let's take a look one by one as you can see on the screen here you'd he renounce his number one he'd renounce his family obviously for those who want to become saints this is something that is a factor but in this satsang there are those who have not become saints but just by become just by keeping loyalty towards god and his son they have renounced their family such kind of bhaktos will be mentioned 
uh, in this Vachnamrut. Renounce any fear of public ridicule. Now for all of those who go to school, doing the Tilak Chanlo, having a Chotli, these are all simple Agnas of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And as Swami Narayan Satsangi is wearing the Kanti, one should definitely abide by these rules. Now we going to school and fearing what will others say, that is one that lacks faith in God along with the greatness, the knowledge of His greatness. Because one who has faith and one who has knowledge of, his, of God and His Son would definitely be able to do Tilak Chanu and would not be fearful of any public ridicule because he would be able to stand up for his religion. He would be able to say that I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. And I definitely, I definitely want to do this. If you say something, no problem. If you don't say anything, no problem. But due to modern living, modern civilization, Western living, we fear public ridicule in such a way that we tend to hide our religious instincts, we tend to hide our religious symbols and characteristics, which Bhagwan is looking at and marking and saying that this is not the characteristic of a firm devotee. So one who does go to school or goes to public in job or anywhere, work, one should definitely have such kinds of symbols of one's own religion, such as Tilak Chan Lo Kanti, Chotli, so on and so forth. Because that's what Bhagwan likes. That's what the Akandik Satpurush likes as well. Renounce a kingdom. Well, we don't have any kingdoms to renounce, but definitely our worldly pleasures, our places of, uh, you can say, uh, things that we really enjoy, we should renounce or let go of to a certain extent so we can worship God more. That's definitely what Bhagwan Swaminarayan is underlying um, in this statement. Renounce pleasures, renounce wealth, renounce his wife. And in, a in the case of a woman, she would renounce her husband. These are the most extreme of uh, Bhagwan's, you can say, uh, uh, points. But definitely, those that abide by us, we should definitely follow because Bhagwan Swami Narayan will become pleased. Nonetheless, one would be considered to have faith in God, coupled with the knowledge of God and His saints' greatness. Now, seeing that, moving on, Sri Ji Maharaj, what he does is that he names the bhaktos that have done this for the sake of God and His Son. Done what? All the points that were mentioned below or above that I just told you about. But what is priceless is that these bhaktos are forever etched in this Vachnamrut, which is above any scripture in this world. As Swaminarayan Satsangis, it has all the essence of all the scriptures in this one scripture. These bhaktos that we're going to go and read over, they are etched forever in the history and Bhagwan Swaminarayan has remembered them in this Vachnamrud. And by listening to these book, those names, our ears will also become purified. Then Sri Jimard narrated the stories of the following devotees, Rajput Galuji of the village Dadusar, which we're going to actually take a look at today, Kushal Kurbai of Dharampur, Parvatbai, Rajbai, Jiubai, Ladubai, Motarambai, Dada Kachar, Machak Bhakta, Mulji Brahmchari, Ladibai and Mataji of Bhuj, Muktanan Swami, Sammat Patel and Ahir from the Valak region, Mulji and Krishni, Krishnaji of the village Mankua, the two Kathi devotees of the village Gundali in the Valak region and other Satsangis. Bhagwan Swami Narayan states a total of 15 names and then 16 saying other satsangis but how we can say how fortunate are these bhaktos 
that have come from Akshardham without a doubt have been mentioned by Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And if we take the stories of each and every Bhakta in this Vachnamrud, this Katha would go on for many, many days. But we are very fortunate that our Muktanan Swami, our Adha Guru, Adi Guru, and our Guru Parampara lineage, Muktanan Swami, Adharan Swami, Hari Priya Swami, Vaikun Charan Swami, Narayan Sarup Swami, Nan Kishore Swami, and our Puja Guruji, from there Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami is mentioned here for having faith in God coupled with the knowledge of His, of God and His Son's greatness. Muktanan Swami is mentioned in so many points that Maharaj throughout the Vajram has kept Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami with him. So, nonetheless, many, many female bhaktos that have done this, many, many queens, Kushal Kurbai of Dharampur is a queen um, <clears throat> in that time who had done this. Um, and from there, we can see that we have a Rajput, which is kind of like from the warrior caste, to a queen, to Parvat Bhai, who is a farmer, and Jiubai and Laduba, who are firm female satsangis to Muktanan Swami who is a sadhu, the most elite sadhu of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, to Mulji and Krishnaji and Gati devotees. Maharaj has a wide range of devotees and from there we can see that in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's eyes there was no high or low in that manner but Bhagwan Swami Narayan's eyes was regarding how much faith coupled with the knowledge of greatness that certain devotee possessed that's how great that's how greatness is measured according to Kandara first chapter 31st Vachramrut in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan moving on then he added Maharaj described in detail whatever they had done for the sake of God and his son. Then he added, one who has faith in God coupled with knowledge of his, great, of his greatness never disobeys the words of God. He does as God says. Having said this, he revealed what was my nature like. Bhagwan Swami Narayan is revealing his own nature. Well, I, I was such a renunciant that I could stay in one place only as long as the time interval between the morning and evening milking of cows, not any longer. I had intense vairagya. Moreover, I had deep affection for Ramana and Swami. Thus, when Swami sent a message from the city of Buj via Mayaram Bhatt, saying, if you desire to stay in the satsang fellowship, you will have to stay by embracing its pillar. I literally embraced the pillar. Seeing this, Mayaram Bhatt said, you should live according to Muktan Swami's commands. Thus, before I had the darshan of Ramanan Swami, I stayed under Muktanan Swami for nine months. So one who has the previously mentioned faith in God and his son can also be known by this characteristic. Sriji Maharaj then narrated the stories of Sundarji Suthar, Sundarji Suthar and Dosa Vanya. One unique characteristic of Bhagwan Swami Narayan was that when he came on this earth, whatever he spoke in his divine Vachnamrut, he first exercised himself. May it be a principle, may it be a command, May it be anything, but whatever Bhagwan Swami Narayan spoke, he exercised himself. And here, being the Supreme Lord of Lords, being above all avatars, being above all deities and Ishwars and Brahma and Mahesh, all those deities and Ishwars, being above everything, yet showing an example and living under the commands of Sadguru Shri Muktanan Swami 
for nine months shows that as devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, may we be a saint, may we be a devotee, Daspanu or servitude is a must, a definite attribute that each and every satsangi should possess in one's life. And Maharaj himself shows his own inclination and what he did. My, uh, Ramanan Swami said to embrace a pillar. And embracing a pillar meaning Muktanan Swami was a pillar of satsang in that time. And Ramanan Swami wanted to test Nilkan Verni. But Ramanan Swami knew that Nilkan Verni was Bhagwan himself. Yet, to set up a role for the devotees of the future, they set a kind of drama. And due to that, Nilkan Verni, at the age of 18, stayed under the commands of Sadhguru Sri Muktanan Swami for nine whole months and did exactly what Muktanan Swami said. That proves that we should also develop such kind of an attribute in our life. And Bhagwan Swami mentions this in this Vachnamrut. So we are very fortunate to be in Sadhguru Sri Muktanan Swami's lineage and moreover, we are very fortunate to have such a God that has exercised each and every attribute, each and every characteristic of a true mumukshu or spiritual aspirant and how he should behave in front of his guru, how he should behave in satsang, how he should behave overall to display and portray a Swaminara in satsangi. Bhagwan has given us everything. There is nothing that remains. Everything has been given by Bhagwan Swami Narayan. All we have to do is put it into practical implementation. And that is our responsibility as satsangis. Moving on. After mentioning that one who has faith, such faith in God and his son has constant enthusiasm, Sriji Maharaj narrated the story of Rana Rajgar. Next, Sriji Maharaj narrated the story of Prahlad. Prahlad said to Nurshiji, Maharaj, I am not afraid of this terrifying form of yours. Nurshi Bhagwan had a form which was of half man and half lion. His waist and above body was consi con uh, consisted of a lion's face, a lion's body, and waist down was of a man. And it was a very terrifying form. But Allah is saying, Maharaj, I am not afraid of this terrifying form of yours. Moreover, I do not consider your protection of me as true protection. Rather, when you save me from my enemy troops in the form of the Indriyas, meaning the senses, I shall consider that to be true protection. Therefore, a devotee of God would not be elated if God were to protect him physically and he would not be disappointed if he were to if he were to would not be disappointed if he were not protected instead he would remain carefree and continue to worship god moreover he would intensely realize the greatness of god in his son then trijimar narrated the story of the old lady from the village gathal continuing he said even if such a devotee were to die painfully, or if, or if a tiger were to devour him, or if a snake were to bite him, or if a weapon were to strike him, or if he were to be drowned in water, or if he were to die in any other horrific way, still a person having faith in God and his son coupled with the knowledge of their greatness, would believe a devotee of God never suffers from any adverse out outcome. He would certainly attain the abode of God. On the other hand, even if a non-believer were to die naturally and were to be cremated in a funeral pry with sandalwood and full obituary rites, he would, be cer he would certainly go to Yampuri, meaning hell. He would 
he would understand the difference between the two extremely clearly. So a person who has faith, who develops such firm convictions in his heart would be known as having faith in God and his son, coupled with the knowledge of their greatness. A person with such faith will definitely reach Brahmul, meaning Akshardham, the highest abode. He would not reside in any other lower abode. Bhagwan Swami Narayan shifts the modes a little and explains that, you know, even a person who has faith in God and his son, they may die in a horrific way, being eaten by a, a, a ferocious animal, maybe falling off of a cliff, dying in an accident, in a very, very vicious way. That person who has faith coupled with the knowledge of God's and his son's greatness would attain Akshardham. Nonetheless, a person who dies naturally on the bed slowly but surely, but does not have faith in God, meaning Bhagwan Swami Narayan, or his son, the Ekantik Satpurush, will go to hell if he has lived such a life, a, such a sinful life. Meaning, the very pinnacle factor that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is trying to show and portray in this Vachramrut is to develop faith in God and His Son, coupled with the knowledge of their greatness. This is the very pinnacle point of going to Akshardham. This is the very pinnacle point of becoming viewed in the eyes of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and His Ekantik Sant. That's why all these bhaktos were mentioned, and Bhagwan Swami Narayan practically po pointed out his own life statement and showed it. That's how much weight and implementation he's trying to put in this very factor. So as devotees and satsangis of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, we should definitely possess such kind of faith and such kind of greatness of God in His Son. So this ends and marks the Vachnamrut Loya third chapter. Moving on to Sadguru Shri Gunatitanan Swamini Vato. Swami Narayan Hare. Swami Evad Karije. To attain satsang is extremely rare. Satsang meaning the satsang fellowship, this religion itself, it is extremely rare. To become ekantik is extremely rare. Ekantik meaning one who possesses complete dharma bhakti gnana vairagya is considered to be ekantik. That is also very rare, extremely rare. And Bhagwan is extremely rare to attain. But we have attained all three, without a doubt. To listen to these spiritual talks is better than one's body and avoiding food. Meaning, meaning one who has, or one who observes many, many uh, renunciations, or one who observes many, many fasts, or even one's own body, what's better than that? listening to spiritual talks, meaning lectures and kathavartas. Why? Because through listening to katha, through performing san samagam, one understands the greatness of God. And when one understands the greatness of God, the satsang, the santos, then one would be able to attain akshardham. But if one cannot understand, then there is no doubt that one can go to akshardham. That's why the most important factor for a devotee of, of Bhagwan Swami Narayan is to a, attach oneself, attach one's soul to the Ekantik Sad Purush, according to Gadara 1st chapter 54, Gadara middle chapter 54, Gadara 1st chapter 67, Gadara 1st chapter 68, Gadiani 2nd. All these Vachramas mentioned have this certain point, Gadara middle chapter 59 so on and so forth. The Vachramrut is completely infused with this very point. So, saying so, attaching oneself to the Gandhik Satpurush and listening to his Kathavarta, his spiritual discourses and implementing them, implementing those principles into one's life is the very factor of staying in satsang and is the very factor of becoming ekantik and is the very factor of going to Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine abode Akshardham. 
That's how important this factor is. These are the words of Purushottam and Gunatit. And from these talks, one can see, <clears throat> experience Akshardham and Bhagwan manifest with his Akshardham and Mukto as is. Do not understand do not understand them to be different. The Jiu remains impotent because it does not realize such glory. <clears throat> In Sadguru Shri Gunatitan Swami's Vat, Prakan 1, the very first talk, Swami says to keep talking about the glory of God and His Son. Keep talking about the glory of God and His Son. Keep talking and understanding because the one that we have received in the form of Pira Gansham Maharaj, the one that we have received in the form of the Ekantik Satpurush Puja Guruji, those who we wanted to attain after leaving this body, we have attained here in this very life. We have to understand that factor. The confusion is that <clears throat> people believe that <clears throat> I will attain God after I leave this body and go to His divine abode. I will attain the company of Santos in after. But in reality, that is a misunderstanding. Whoever we, whoever we have attained here, in the form of Hari Krishna Maharaj, Pyura Gansha Maharaj, Thakurji Maharaj, and in the form of Puja Guruji, Santo, we have attained. We don't have to go anywhere else. We don't have to go and wait to go to Akshardham and then we would be able to say, oh, I have attained God and I have attained Santos. We have attained them here, but realizing that glory is very, very important. Because that is the very factor of liberation. That's why one should continuously engage in talking and listening to the glory of God and His Sant. That's how important of a factor that is. And finally, a charitra of Rajput Galuji of Dadusar, who Sriji Maharaj mentioned in this very Vachnavrut, Loya third, the very first name. So let's take a look in this story of how this important bhakta got his name etched in the Vachnamrut by Sriji Maharaj. What did he do exactly? How did he behave? How did he live his life? What exact factor put him into Bhagwan Swaminarayan's mindset and Bhagwan Swaminarayan spoke his name in this Vachnamrut? What did he do? How did he do it? With what intention did he do it? That's what we want to take a look at today. Charitra is of Rajput, Rajput Galuji of Dadusar. <clears throat> Rajput is a type of caste, which is of the Kshatriya caste, which is warriors. Galuji is the name and Dadusar is a village in Gujarat. Once the news of Sriji Maharaj's visit to village Dadusar came, meaning Bhagwan Swaminarayan was going to go visit Dadusar, the village. At that time, Darbar Galuji's mother was ill. Soon after, due to a severe illness, she passed away. And the brothers thought, what should we do now? Bhagwan Swami Narayan is coming. And if we continue this funeral rites, then Bhagwan Swami Narayan will come and leave right away. What should we do? So the brothers and Galuji thought, that let's wrap up mother and put her into the loft for right now and let Maharaj come. Let's throw a grand procession. So that's what they did. They called the village drum beaters, musicians, and they welcomed Maharaj on a very, very grand scale to their village in Dadusar and welcomed them to <clears throat> the home next door. Not their very home because their very home had their mother in there, but Kana, Kana by his home. Then they told, they called a Brahman and had him prepare a thal for Maharaj. Maharaj ate the thal. Thus for three days, Galuji kept Maharaj in the village and had him visit each house of the village. Galuji had Bhagwan Dupadramni of all the bhaktos in the village of Dadusar. Think about it. Their mother 
their marital mother passing away and without any kind of emotion without any kind of reaction they welcoming Bhagwan Swaminarayan on a grand scale shows that very factor that they had faith in God coupled with the knowledge of His greatness. Who is this God? He is the Supreme Lord. Who is our mother? I, we have received many mothers in the past and this is just one of them. Such kind of knowledge, such kind of gnan they had. The Lusar and his brothers performed such kind of an act that's where their name was etched in the history of this Vachnamrut. Now think about it in our scenario. Would we be able to do this? Our mother passing away and we wrapping up the body, putting it into a loft and forgetting about her totally, not performing a single funeral rite and welcoming Bhagwan and throwing a party for him, dancing that Bhagwan has come to our village, Bhagwan has come to our village and having Bhagwan perform Padramis all throughout the village of, of Dadusar. Think about how much faith they have. Think about how much importance and knowledge they have of God's greatness. This is why their names were etched in Bhagwan's Vachnamut. <clears throat> After then, when Maharaj was getting ready to leave, they all went to say their goodbyes. Galuji with other villagers even accompanied Maharaj for a few kilometers. And at that time, Maharaj asked all villagers to return back to the village and said while addressing to Galuji, Oh Galuji, please now, you go to your home. It has been three days since we took your mother to our Akshardham. So you with all villagers perform her funeral rites in a grand fashion in these very clothes you are wearing right now. Everyone was surprised to hear Bhagwan Swaminarayan knew this. So he commanded that obviously you have been hanging out with me for three days and giving, performing Padramnis. Now you perform your funeral rites. No other Bhakto in that village knew that Dadu, uh, Dadu, uh, Galuji, Galuji was going through such a dilemma. Only Bhagwan Swaminarayan knew through his omniscient powers and Bhagwan Swaminarayan after uh, doing all the Padramnis at the end before leaving in front of all the satsangis and villagers said, go ahead and perform your, the funeral rites your, uh, of your mother since she has passed away. And everyone became shocked. They said, what? How can that be possible? Everyone was surprised to hear that they had all returned to the village and cremated Galuji's mother. Maharaj said to all santos and devotees who were with him, Galuji really understands the glory of this satsang and God because others couldn't do what he just did. Because only if one has staunch, meaning firm faith in God, it is possible not to, not to be overwhelmed by social pressures and when someone understands the communion with God, he communion with God is what makes us truly purified. God really accepts and believes in such devotees' devotion. Galuji had this kind of an understanding, and due to that, Bhagwan Swaminarayan mentioned his faith. For us devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, we are very fortunate, and we should develop such kind of a faith in God. And with a couple of knowledge of his greatness, this is the core. Uh, this is of uh, the course for Loya chapter third, course number two. The PDF is also posted in the groups. If you do not have, please email us at loyadamnj at three gmail dot com. Next week will be a review week, and then following that, we'll move on to your course three. Saying this, my humble Jay Swaminarayan.